Hello friends, this video on Relations and Functions Part 32 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched Part 1 to Part 31. Let us discuss one theorem. The theorem says if there is a function x to y f, there is a function g y to z, and there is a function h z to x that is. From x to y there is a function, y to z there is a function, and z to s there is a function. This is f, and this is g, and this is h. Then h of g o f is equal to h o g of f. Both are same. There is a theorem, we will take an example to prove this. That is h of you take g of first and then take h of this or you take h of g and you take this one. Both are same. We will take one example to prove this. We have this function from n to n, f from g is also from n to n and h is from n to r where fx is equal to 2x, gy is equal to 3y plus 4 and h is equal to sin z. We have to prove that h o g o f is equal to h o g o f. First, take this part. Let's take this part. This is nothing but h of g o f. This is nothing but h of g of f x. This is nothing but h of g of f x is nothing but two x. G of two x. This is nothing but h of g of this is nothing but 3 into 2x plus 4 because g of y is 3y plus 4. So this becomes this becomes h of 3 6x plus 4. 6x plus 4. h of 3 uh, 6x plus 4 is nothing but sine of 6 x plus 4. Why? Because h of z is sin z. So h of g of f is sine of 6 x plus 4. Now let me find the other one. h of g of f. This is nothing but h of g of fx. That is nothing but h of g of fx is nothing but 2x. This is nothing but h of g to x and there is something but h of g to x is nothing but 3 into 2x plus 4 that is h of 6x plus 4 and this becomes sine of 6x plus 4. So if you see LHS and RHS both are same. Thus we can say that h of g o f is equal to h of g both are same. We will take one more theorem. This theorem says that if there is a function x to y, a function g y to z, and they are invertible function. Both are invertible function. x to y is a function f, and y to z is a function g. Both are invertible function. Then g o f is also invertible, and that is g o f inverse will be equal to f inverse of g inverse. This is the theorem. There are two functions, both are invertible function, x to y and y to z. Then g o f is also invertible. We will uh, we'll take one example to do this. So there is a function f that has value from 1, 2, 3 to abc. So 1, 2, 3 are the value here. abc is here. And there is a function g from abc is Apple ball cat. It's apple ball cat. F of one is a, f of two is b, f of three is c. Given g of a is apple, g of b is ball, and g of c is cat. This is f and this is g. This is given. We have to show that f g and g o f are invertible functions. So if you see, 
f function is invertible because if you see it's all one on one for any point a b c if you see there's only one injection coming on also there is no often element in this one a b c there is no often element so it is one on one and onto so f is invertible so we're talking about g for g also if you see g also if you see this a to apple b to ball c to cat all these values are one on one also there is no often element here so g is also invertible if you view the whole picture gof what you will see one gives apple two gives ball and three gives cat this also if you see is, is invertible why because there is no often element here and it's all one on one mapping so all are invertible first part is done second part is we have to find f inverse g inverse gof inverse all these we have to find so if f is So for f inverse, if you see f is 1 to a, 2 to b and 3 to c, if you want to find f inverse, it will be, just invert this. This will be, uh, instead of 1 to a, it will be a to 1. Instead of b to uh, 1 to b, it will be b to 2 and 3 to c, it will be c to 3. This will be the number. This is my f inverse. Similarly, if I want to find g inverse, g inverse will be same, like this only. This and this will be apple ball, then you have cat, then a, b, c. Look at this, just flip it. You got f inverse, you got g inverse. You want to find what? G O F inverse. G O F, if you see, G O F is nothing but see G O F if you want, G O F is nothing but you get 1, 2, 3 and here you get apple ball this is GOF so GOF inverse I do want to find this will be nothing but from apple ball cat I am going to 1, 2, 3 this is my GOF inverse so I, have, I found F inverse GOF G inverse and G O F inverse also. Now I have to prove that G O F inverse is equal to F inverse of G inverse. So G O F inverse is this. F inverse of G inverse, if I want to find, I have to merge these two. Correct? So what I have to do? I have to first take this guy, G inverse, that is this guy, apple ball cat and this guy abc with this i have to merge this because it is f inverse of g inverse so first i do g inverse and i put f inverse here this is one two three if i merge these two this is what i get f inverse of g inverse if you look this carefully this is nothing but apple ball cat and this points to and if you see this both the function are same that is g o f inverse g o f inverse is equal to f inverse of g inverse both are same correct so what we have done here we have this function f we have this function g we found f inverse we found g inverse we also find g o f and then we found g of inverse then we were asked to prove f inverse of g inverse we got this this should be equal to g of inverse and we saw that with the e. thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again